This video is sponsored by Mammoth Interactive. Take your skills to the next level at mammothinteractive.com. Check the links down below for some amazing deals. Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a mushroom kingdom. That's right. I'm going to show you how to make kind of a mushroom forest. And this is going to be a little bit outside the box, but I actually really like this tutorial when I was uh, making it off screen. So let's go ahead and let's start. Let's First of all, let's add in a landscape here. And what I'm going to do is I'm adding in the mossy, let's see, not the moss ground, but this one. All right. So we're going to go ahead and push create here. And what you can do is I do have that uh, mossy ground here and let's hop into that quickly and let's tile it to 0.2 and 0.2. That will make it look just a bit better here. And then if we kind of play around with this here, you can see that yes, yes, indeed we have, well, it looks like a decently uh, good mossy ground here. All right. Kind of looks a bit shiny, but that's okay. So let's hop into Quixel Bridge. So the one that I need you to download are these spotted red mushrooms. They're in the natural stump and you need to download the nanite. Okay. You're going to see why I'm going to download the nanite for a second. And if you really want to, you can add in some, uh, some of these others here. And I think the moss or whatever was somewhere in one of these. I cannot remember what it is, but if you just type in the word moss, you'll be able to get mossy ground. So once those are installed, let's go ahead and let's add in our mushrooms. This is really easy and really simple, but it might uh, bring your computer to your knees uh, just because we're bringing in some nanite things here. So first of all, let's go into our 3D assets here. And I do believe I have these spotted red mushrooms and I think this is the one, yes, okay. So what we're gonna do, and we can actually kind of go down and zoom in just a bit here. But basically, we're just going to drag all of these out here. Okay, now don't worry about this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag literally all of these out. And it might take a bit of time. But for the most part, you're basically going to need to do all of this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause it and then add all of these in here. And then I'll show you what to do after that. Okay, so I'm going to pause it and just do this process there. Okay, so that didn't take very long, but as you can see, these mushrooms are quite small. Now, what these mushrooms are really used for is like really big close ups like this. All right. Um, but what we really want is we want a mushroom forest. So, what do we want to do? So, what we want to do is you want to kind of uh, see all of the spotted mushrooms in here. And it looks like there's only three. Um, so, I'm just going to put out the rest of them here. All right. So as you can see, I now have a bunch of them and some of them are repeated, but it doesn't really matter. But what we are going to do is we're going to click on all of these here and then we are going to multiply that to 100. Make sure this lock is here. And then boom, we now have basically all of our mushrooms kind of all in a small little spot. But what we want to do is we now want to move these around. And I think having one of these is sufficient. Um, one of each is sufficient for now, but we can actually copy these out later. So as you can see, this is kind of a bird's eye view. And since this is a bird's eye view, you can kind of, um, add in these mushrooms here and it's looking pretty good so far, right? So, um, now there's a couple things that, and a couple of caveats that I'm going to, to kind of add in here, uh, in the moment, uh, here, but the cool thing about this is that the mushrooms are already at different heights. So normally when I'm doing something like this, I would add in different heights. Uh, but uh, for now, these mushrooms seem to be uh, all different heights. So let's go ahead and let's quickly run this here. And you can see that is not bad, right? The, uh, the, in order to get like, if I kind of move in real close here, it's a little glossy. And again, because this is supposed to be made like a, uh, um, uh, it's supposed to be made uh, very much like a, um, uh, a close up here, but this will only work here if it's the nanite version. If it's not the nanite version, this isn't going to look very good. All right. So we got a, a bunch of, uh, let's, looks like we have a bunch of small mushrooms and bigger mushrooms, obviously. And what we want to do is if we're going to make some of this here, we can actually do this. Uh, in a very easy way here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually, I do like the idea of having like these bigger mushrooms. So I'm going to copy these out a little bit more um, just because I think they look a little bit better. Okay. And then if we, and there's this one here that actually looks pretty good here. 
And I'm just going to copy this out a few times as well. Um, and you're going to see where I'm going to go with this here. But basically, we now have um, uh, lots of these. And um, all we're going to do is um, we're going to select all of these here like this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to group. Okay. And so as you can see, these are now all a group. Okay. Now, why is this important? Well, I'm just going to basically copy these over once. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to rotate these. Okay. Something like that. So that way we know that we're not getting the exact same one all the time. Right. And so, you know, it depends on how dense you want to make this forest, but generally when you add in something organic, you do want to rotate it a bit and you can always put in extra um, mushrooms around in the group here. But this is probably going to be um, probably going to be quite a bit. All right. And you can see there's like a little bit of a clearing. But if we just play this for now, it looks like we have a pretty interesting mushroom forest. Now we could probably do this a few more times. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So uh, for example, I'm just going to take these here. And remember, since these are all kind of grouped together, uh, we can kind of just you know, move these over here like so. And then I'm just going to, there's some that needs to be over here as well. So let me just uh, move up. And, you know, the thing is now uh, with Nanite, you can actually add in these many, this many actors um, for the most part. I mean, there's going to be some issues here, but it looks like there's always like a little bit of a clearing here. So if I were to do this over again, I'd probably add in uh, some more here. And we can remember, we can always ungroup, right? Uh, so we can, uh, we can groups here and we can go ungroup and then we can kind of fill, let's just see, we can kind of fill this up with some more mushrooms here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So there we go. Right. And that's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's play this here. And as you can see, we now have a pretty interesting mushroom forest, right? Not too bad. Now, one thing you notice we haven't done. Uh, is we haven't added in any terrain here. And if we were to do this again, uh, we would probably add, an, add in a terrain. But this looks like a pretty interesting level, nevertheless. Uh, it gives you a different perspective. And I should also mention that this is something that wasn't meant to be done, right? These are meant to be small. You can take close-ups here. But this way, uh, with Nanite, you can actually, um, uh, you can actually do this. Uh, except if you kind of zoom in all the way here, it does look a little weird, all right? So... Uh, the point is, is that like bigger models wouldn't do something like that. Right. But we're not quite done yet. We could probably do a few more things. Okay. So the other thing we can do here is we can add in some foliage. Right. And so I do happen to have some grass clumps here. And I think this is the one, uh, if you can, if you just go into Quixel bridge and type in grass clumps like this here, I've already searched it before, uh, make sure you're in kind of like the environment here. Uh, you can basically uh, pick in any kind of these grass clumps. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that that's essentially what I'm doing here. And I'm just basically going to click this here. And uh, the brush size is huge. So I just want to test this out a little bit first, and then we're going to kind of go here. So it looks a little barren. And of course, we can spend a ton of time with this here. Uh, but you can see here that like the grass kind of just hops on um, the mushrooms here and, and whether you're going for that effect, it could actually be really cool. Uh, but, and you can see the, the shaders are also compiling, but I'm not necessarily into that. Um, I think that the density might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring that down here. And so if we kind of do that here and I think, you know, that actually might not be so bad, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out over here and maybe not that much, but you can, you get the idea here and you can kind of just basically move these around. Uh, with the grass clumps. And I think the grass growing on the mushrooms is a nice little touch. Um, if you don't want to do that, you would have to kind of uh, delete all of the, the mushrooms here. And it would actually be pretty easy to do. All you would do is you would, um, you know, cut it and then paste it later on. But I think this grass clump looks pretty good, right? And so if we run that here, and you, you run it now, the, it gives you a whole other level, uh, <laughs> pardon the pun, but it gives you a whole other um, kind of, um, uh, it, gives, it gives you something a little bit more that there's some grass here. So not too bad. Uh, it's a really interesting little level here. I think it looks really cool. Last but certainly not least is I always like to change the material of this here. 
uh, to something a little bit different. In this case, um, you know, if we had something green, I don't think uh, we have, let's see, you know, if we had like either copper or gold, one of the, the two colorful metals, right? Gold works, but you know what? I'm going to put this as copper, just like that here. So, so now we have copper and it just kind of stands out just a little bit. Okay. So there we go. And so that, I think that looks really cool, right? I think that looks absolutely amazing um, in terms of what we can do. And of course you can play around with other things. Like for example, if you do control L here, you can kind of change the time of day. So I kind of like, you know, if you bring it down or up, let's see. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So as you can see here, now that's a different time of day and it kind of illuminates the whole scene in a different way. Right. And so there you go. There is a mushroom forest for, um, uh, for your being pleasures. All right. Well, that's actually a pretty interesting tutorial. I'm very happy I made it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help this channel. As of now, this channel isn't monetized. So please help us out by liking, sharing, and please share this on Reddit. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you really like this video, you can buy our content down below. It really does help us out when you buy our content down below because this channel doesn't do a Patreon. Instead, we sell our digital products down below. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month every single month. We release everything from Adobe tutorials to 3D modeling tutorials to game development tutorials to machine learning tutorials to web development tutorials and more. We're constantly pushing the bounds in e-learning and if we can get to 10,000 paid subscribers per month, we can become the best e-learning company on the planet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.